there, fellow travelers and fellow conference attendees. Mark here with Walter's World, and today I'm right outside of LAX. I can see the planes right out my window, and I'm here for a conference. And after eight days of being in LA at a conference hotel for conferences, I did come up with some don'ts for actually conference hotel stays for travelers that are out there. And my first don't I have for you is if you are a tourist, don't stay at a conference hotel. Okay, conference hotels are geared for conferences and people attending a conference, not for tourists that want to go explore the city. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to know. I know you get tempted by those deals to stay there and look at all the things they might have for you, but it could be an issue because one of the big things you need to realize is don't think that conference hotels are in the center of town. You may think, oh, it's a great deal, it's right there, mm, but if you have to Uber into town all the time, you know, conference hotels out by LAX, there's a lot of them out there. I'm here, but I'm having to Uber everywhere I go. I have to, you know, figure out the, how to deal with traffic. I can't really walk anywhere. And so that fact that they're not in the downtown area, usually, now some cities, they do happen to be there, but that is something to consider. And that's the main reason why I don't think you should stay at a conference hotel if you're a tourist, okay? Now, for actual conference goers or people that are gonna stay at a conference hotel, I think another don't you need to remember is don't forget to call the hotel and ask them about their shuttles, okay? Because conference hotels know that they have a lot of people that are gonna be flying in or maybe taking the train in, and so they'll have shuttles from certain parts around town. And the thing is, is they might have something online, but I've found in general, the explanation for the free shuttle or paid shuttle or whatever to the conference hotel is, is rather vague. So it's best to call and ask exactly, which terminal do I need to go to to get that shuttle to the hotel? Um, where do I need to come out of? What level I need to be on? Because I know for me, the hotel I'm at, it was basically, oh, go outside, it'll be right there. Well, no, it wasn't go outside of arrivals, you had to go outside of departures and then go to the far inside and then follow the signs that disappear and then hope they come by and then wave them down. Okay, I needed a little bit more information than go outside, all right? So that's why I always say just call, ask, and that'll be a lot more helpful. And when you do get to the airport, my next don't for you is don't forget to tell them what conference you're there for. Because some conferences, what they'll do is they already have a goodie bag waiting for you, and so they'll give it to you. And sometimes maybe it's just a couple waters. Maybe it's a discount for dinner. Maybe it's tickets for drinks at the bar. There's certain things there, and, and don't just check in like a normal check-in. Check and say, hey, I'm here for Vid Summit. I'm here for VidCon. You know, is there anything available? And there might be. But what's important is what usually happens when you tell them what you're here for, they'll tell you, oh, well, tomorrow morning it starts at 9 a.m. and you need to go to the Gateway Ballroom. Oh, thank you because again, your conference might not be very helpful either. So giving that little bit of extra information to check in can help out. Now, when you are booking your conference hotels, I know I said don't stay here in a conference hotel if you're gonna be a tourist, but sometimes you get such a good deal and they actually extend the deal. So if your conference is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you might be able to stay Friday and Saturday as well. So what you could do is kind of extend your stay and have a little mini vacation at the end. I know you're not really close to town, but if you're already here and you get the deal, sometimes it's worthwhile to do that because blending pleasure travel and business travel is actually a popular thing these days. Now, if you are gonna stay as a tourist for a little bit on the end, I think another thing that's important is don't expect a lot of help when it comes to tourism kind of stuff because conference hotels are really geared for conferences and they're bringing people to work there from all over to help out the people that come from all over to be there. So sometimes you don't get a lot of local knowledge from the staff there. So go to the concierge and ask what they have because maybe they can help you set up a tour, or give you some information. But I've seen in general, in my experiences going to conference hotels, they seem to have the least amount of like knowledge and, and help when it comes to doing the tourist stuff around town. They can give you the big overall things, but it is one of those things you're going to want to do some of your own research because they might not be as you know geared towards helping tourists as other places. Now, another thing I got to warn you about, if you're going to a conference hotel, don't expect a free breakfast, okay? The one I'm at right now, they have a $24 buffet breakfast or you could do a la carte, which turns out to be about $30 when you have a juice and a coffee and, and you know some eggs or a toast or something. So don't expect a free breakfast. Don't expect a cheap breakfast either, okay? And, and another thing is, I would say is don't try to eat on property because what happens is the prices in the restaurants and the bars and stuff like that usually have kind of elevated prices because they know, oh, people are here for a conference. They're not gonna be able to go anywhere. They wanna do business here. And so they know they can, you know, have the prices a bit higher and the flavor tends to be a little bit lower 
okay? So don't eat on property. That's why it's always important for you to don't forget to look up the restaurants that are around this area. Look, I'm in LA, so there's fantastic food everywhere. Even by the airport, there's a few things you can find. Yeah, I have to Uber 10 minutes or 15 minutes, go to El Segundo, there's plenty of stuff there to eat. I can go to Roscoe's if I want like chicken and waffles. You know, they got good stuff around here you can get. But do the research beforehand, so when you're here, you can go grab that food during your lunch break versus having the standard ham and cheese Subway sandwich that they give you. Come on, you want, you want something a little bit better than that, right? But also what's nice is if you meet people and you meet people at the conference and you want to impress them, you're like, oh, hey, I got, I got reservations in El Segundo at this one place. We got to go to that. Oh, okay, or we can head down to Manhattan Beach. There's some really fantastic eateries down there. Oh, I didn't know. The other people didn't know. And so that makes you look a little bit more like an expert. So that's going to help you out with whatever you're doing at your conference. And also you get to eat better food. Now, I know we can't always go out to eat and we don't always want to spend big bucks at the restaurant down, you know, downstairs in the hotel. One thing is if you can bring snacks, I mean, maybe you, some people bring snacks from home or even you can just hit up like here. I walked down to Ralph's. There's a grocery store here in LA and picked up some food and drinks and some bourbon, you know, so I had something in, the, in my room so I wasn't spending big bucks on all the stuff here. Just having the little snacky dudes here can really save you money because conference hotels will tend to have like a kiosk or, or some kind of like, I guess you'd say like a mini mart you could go into, but the price is there. I mean, it was $4 for a little thing of milk, like literally like this downstairs. Come on. So grab some snacks. So you just have something in the room because maybe you're going to talk in the room, maybe you're going to have a drink in the room, or maybe you just don't want to spend $20 for, you know, a bag of chips and a drink, okay? Another thing I would say is don't expect good free Wi-Fi. Conferences have their conference internet. When you go downstairs, you have that in the conference area. There's free internet there for you to use because it's a conference. However, don't expect it to be good. One thing I've seen, the conference I've gone all over the country is getting good internet on the conference internet is not always easy. And if you're gonna be staying at a conference hotel, when you go into the rooms, that same free internet is usually pretty, 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 pretty slow. Like the room I'm in right now, I got, I think two or three megabytes um, per second. Yeah, it, they even said very slow. You will need buffering for your, you know, your if you're gonna watch videos and it's true, okay? So so just kind of think about that when you, when you are there, when you're looking at Wi-Fi. So you might want to pay the 15 bucks a day to get the super fast internet if they have that available, if you need it, okay? If you don't need it, if you're just doing email, usually you're okay, but it's one of those things that don't think that, oh, I'll get by with a free internet and we'll be fine if you have a data heavy kind of job. Also, don't forget, you might want to make sure you have a VPN, a virtual private network, because if you're on open Wi-Fi at conferences or your hotels, a virtual private network can make a big difference in keeping your data safe. So if you're sending those industry trade secrets or, or just sending pictures back to your family, you don't want those things over the internet being found by anybody. So having a VPN when you go on these trips can really help out. Now, Another thing I think I need to mention, this is a thing for all hotels, but I think it's really important for conference hotels because most of the time you go to a conference hotel, it's a business thing. So you might have a suit and tie or, or a collared shirt. I know I'm not dressed up today, but this is day eight and I'm flying home in about an hour. So I'm like, I'm going comfy and flying home. But I would say is this, don't just iron your clothes right away. What do you mean by that? Well, make sure you test the iron to see if it's clean. Set the ironing board, heat up that iron, and then go get a towel, get it damp, and lay it down, and then iron it and test it. Because we've been in places where literally it left brown marks on my shirts. It's disgusting. And you don't want to have your dress outfit ruined before you go down to the conference floor going, oh, it looks like my baby pooped on me. No, okay, so don't forget to test the iron out when you go there. Um, oh, also another thing is, even if your boss or your company is booking your, your hotel accommodations, don't forget to give your points for that place because conference hotels usually aren't cheap, okay? So if you're staying at them, why not get those free bonus points so when you go on vacation with your family some other time, you can get a free stay or a free upgrade because you know there's benefits to that, okay? And even if you're not using that hotel very often, it's worth it to have their points just in case, okay? Because look, I've got eight nights at this hotel. That's eight nights staying at a Marriott property, and so that helps me get to the next level. So when I go stay at my usual Marriott's, I don't have a problem. I can, hey, I'm to the next status faster. So think about that as well. And then I wanna say this. If you have an early morning flight, like a 6 a.m. flight or a 7 a.m. flight, don't expect your hotel shuttle to work, okay? 
One thing I've seen at different conference hotels, some places like the Sheraton here, they're great. It's a 24 hour shuttle, like every 20 minutes. It's awesome, okay? No problems whatsoever. But I've been to other conferences that offer you full a shuttle service, but it's a paid shuttle service, and they don't start until 8 a.m. I'm like, wait, you don't start your shuttle till 8 a.m.? I know it's only 20 minutes from the airport, so if you only start at 8, and you get there like, let's say 8.30 at the airport, and you gotta be there two hours early, so that shuttle is only helpful for people that have flights after 10.30. What about all the business travelers that have to leave in the morning? Ugh, kind of frustrating, so make sure you ask about that free shuttle, hey, when does it start in the morning? Can I get to that flight? Because I know for us, there's been a number of times where we've had you know, a conference hotel, and you know they're like, well, we have a shuttle, but I'm like, uh, we got an Uber in the morning, and you got to make sure you have that thing scheduled because sometimes it's hard to get an Uber at five o'clock in the morning in random places. All right. So I hope this list helped you get a bit more prepared for your next conference hotel. If you got some other don'ts for conference hotels, please put it in the comment section below, and I'll say bye from here in LA.